So now we made it to the Molly Gallivan uh, Visitor Center mm -hmm. and Cottage and Farm. So this is a place you can come and tour um, like a farm, see some animals. They also have a uh, area where they sell like some baked goods, mm -hmm. a tea room, and they have lots of um, wool uh, products you, you can get too. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's really neat. So what did you get, Griff? I got a bottle for a sheep and I got a food for a goat. And chickens. Chickens. Yeah. yeah. Feed them. Yeah. This is our map and Mama. a special key to get us in. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just pushes it, it opens it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, and it was only 10 euro for us to get to do this. So the tour starts with a 10 minute video. So we're going to go inside and check that out. Walk through Molly's traditional farm, where you'll experience in real life the farming traditions of rural Ireland in the past. It will give you an insight into farming life in the days of horsepower and self-sufficiency. So Molly Gallivan was a widow, but she had seven children. So she tried to come up with another way to supplement her income. And she ended up making a, a homemade whiskey drink called Poutine. Um, and so she would use that and open up a uh, like a local pub or local uh, bar. And she would sell that to the tourists and visitors and use that money to help uh, raise her family, basically. The homemade whiskey that she would make became known as Molly's Mountain Dew. So when a new road was being built in front of her cottage, she ended up creating a small market and restaurant so that way she could sell some of the produce and things from her, uh, from her farm and baked goods. And then eventually she uh, started to create wool products um, and like sweaters and things like that to sell also to the visitors. And as the wool industry grew, she started to employ, employ more people and, and it became a large business in this area. This is the remnants of a cottage that was abandoned during the 1840s as a result of the Great Famine. So as many as 12 people would have lived in this, this house and try to survive on just a few acres of land and what they can produce on that. He's wrong to eat it. Oh, hey, it's so cool. Baby. This is something I read on the reviews of this place. Oh. I was like, you could feed the sheep and the baby sheep. And I was like, we gotta go. Because that itself is a reason to go. Okay, let's share. Let's fit. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> So that was very cool. We got to get right up next to the animals. You get to feed them and pet them. So that was very neat. And it wasn't just the baby sheep. Also got to see some pigs, donkeys, cows, uh, chickens, ducks, and we got to feed all those. So that was really neat. After exploring the farm, we head into the gift shop to see the wool products and other locally made items. So after we did our walk, we came into the tea room and we are getting some yummy treats. We are getting a Guinness cake, an apple crumble, and a scone. And I got tea and Lucas got coffee. Ooh. It's yummy. Apple crumble is so good. Is it good? Yeah. So we just finished checking out the Molly Gallivan uh, Visitor Center mm -hmm. and Farm. And it was honestly really fun. So Griffin had a great time feeding the animals. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a great place to stop if you are driving through this area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice yeah. to pull off and uh, get some food. We had uh, some tea and coffee and, and pastries. Mm -hmm. And the scenery here is just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it was very cool to uh, hear about the history of Molly Gall Gallivan. Mm -hmm. And definitely would recommend coming here. So next, after visiting the Molly Gallivan Visitor Center, we're gonna check out the Barra Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So this is kinda at, um, yeah. right at the entrance to the peninsula. So there's a road that goes all the way around and we're gonna take the, the southern part mm -hmm. and go to the far end and that's where we're staying tonight. Yep. The Ring of Barra is 148 kilometers 
and shows some of Ireland's best scenery. The drive nonstop takes two hours, but we recommend spending the day here to explore the area. So this sign marks the Wild Atlantic Way. It is a driving tour that you can take along the coast of Ireland. And so far, driving around this peninsula has been breathtaking. There is some incredible views, mountains, coastline, jagged rocks. It's very cool. We made it to our camping spot for the night. We are staying at a boondocking spot right on the cliffs outside of the town Alahees. At first, uh, the first few days that we've been here in Ireland, um, definitely was thinking, oh man, Scotland's better. Um, but now since we've gotten to this part of Ireland, the scenery has been incredible and we've really loved it. Here's where we're sleeping tonight. Okay, and stay right there. Well, we, we, we have found a trail how to get down here. Okay, and what do we have to do? We need to climb up there and go carefully down there and climb, 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 and here. Okay, we started at the top and we made it all the way yeah. over to here. So Just had another great night of camping here in Ireland. So this spot that we stopped at was perfect. This as this road has not been very busy at all. No one else stopped here within the past time that we've, we've stayed the night. And so we've had a lot of privacy and the scenery here is just gorgeous. Me and Griffin got to enjoy walking along the coastline, exploring and hiking next to the cliffs. And so it was so nice to fall asleep to the sound of the waves and wake up to this incredible view. Next, we're gonna check out a few sites here in the Barra Peninsula. One thing is there is a um, copper mine museum, and then there's also a few um, natural landscapes and places we wanna stop and check out and maybe do some hiking. We loved how colorful the town was. The houses really pop with the gray clouds in the sky. So last night we stayed outside of the town of Alahees and in the town they have a museum, the Copper Mine Museum. So that's what we're checking out now. Admission is six euro per person and it's all about the uh, copper industry, the copper mines that were located here in this town. So this museum is pretty small, but there were a few um, things that I learned that were pretty interesting. So the first ever um, man engine or it's basically like an elevator was invented here where they would uh, be able to move the miners all the way from a thousand feet underground up to the surface level um, and then also during the industrial revolution this area was the most important area for copper mining there is also a section in the museum that talked about um, Butte, Montana in, in the US, there was an Irish immigrant who bought a, uh, a mine and it ended up becoming a really successful copper mine. So he sent word back to Ireland that if any Irish immigrant would make it to Butte, Montana, he would give them a job. And so now that Butte, Montana is one of the most Irish cities in the US. So just outside of the town, you can actually go see some of the remains of the copper mines. So that's what we're doing now. Uh, we just parked at this little trailhead and now we're gonna hike up to go see one of uh, the copper mines.
We made it to the mine shaft. We hiked up here. It wasn't too bad of a walk, but this is another place that is giving me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> I feel like everywhere we've been, like all these old buildings and these old ruins are just, they're creepy. Like I just heard some crows con and that just, it just sounds so freaky. You can't go much closer than this because there's a fence that surrounds the whole thing for safety purposes but it it's it's worth the see when you come here just because i feel like i've never seen an old mine shaft so this is something really cool to check out when you're here on this peninsula also with the hike up here you do get to see the mine shaft closer but you also get an awesome view of the town below and the gorgeous water we started on the southern road of the Barra Peninsula, so now we're gonna start going up and going on the north part. We are now heading to the Uroc Stone Circle. So next we're going to check out the Uruk Stone Circle. This is also on the Bear Peninsula and you have to get uh, get to this area on a very small windy road. So be careful if you're driving out here, but let's go see if it's worth it. So there is a small parking lot and there's an entry fee of five euro per person. So that was pretty cool. It was less than a five minute walk to get to the stone circle from the parking lot. It says that it's from the Bronze Age and there are over 100 stone circles like that just in Southwest Ireland alone. We are now at the Glenenchiquin Park. This park has supposedly the highest waterfall here in Ireland. And so they have several trails you can go and explore. Uh, we did have to pay admission uh, to get in here. I believe it was like seven euro per person. Um, so now we're gonna go walk some of the trails to go to the base of the waterfall. We made it to the waterfall. It was a quick walk over here, like 15 minutes. A little longer for us because Griffin likes to dilly dally. So there are more trails here. I don't know how much more we're gonna do because we have to head on to Cary tonight. So we'll see how much more we do. I'm gonna go on the purple trail next. So we chose to do the Heritage Trail, but if you continue a little bit further on the red trail, it takes you to this lake, which it's pretty stunning. <laughs> On this purple trail, you go through this beautiful hillside with all these luscious ferns and get a really cool view of the waterfall. You get to see some cool sheep up close. Lucas and I feel like this area reminds us so much of Glencoe, especially when we went to see the location of Hagrid's hut. This is exactly what this reminds me of. There was like ferns and up on the hillside. And by the time the ferns were kind of dried out. So this is so pretty. All the ferns are so green and luscious. So we are wrapping up our time here at the Glenintraquin Park. Uh, we just did the Heritage Trail. It took us about an hour mm -hmm. and it was a great trail. Yes, it was gorgeous. It took us by the base of the waterfall and then through um, a wooded area mm -hmm. and through an area full of ferns, ferns yeah. and then through the, the fields with all of the sheep and it was just a great trail. Mm -hmm. It was very scenic and 
One thing that we've learned while we've been here in Ireland is that even if it doesn't say it's going to rain, <laughs> it might it, rain. You better prepare that it's going to rain. Especially if you're hiking. Seems like every, <laughs> every time, time we've started a, yeah. a trail, mm -hmm. it is started to rain, uh, rain, rain on us at some point. Yes. And then oh. now you can see that the sun has come out yeah. and it looks wonderful. Yes. So, uh, but we have thoroughly enjoyed our time here on the Barra Peninsula mm -hmm. doing uh, the Ring of of bear I guess around mm -hmm. the, yeah. this area and it has been so scenic so beautiful mm -hmm. next we're heading to the Kerry Peninsula and so that uh, has the Ring of Kerry which is supposedly more popular more famous so we'll see if that is if that is worth it if yeah. it's worth the hype I know we've really loved it here mm -hmm. and we have had not nearly it's not nearly been as busy like no. it's been uh -uh. very chill last night where we stayed there was nobody mm -hmm. else that stayed there nope and there was, there was hardly any traffic last yeah. night there's here no one there's here. only been a couple people that have yeah. been here at this park while we've been here yeah. so we'll see if uh the ring of carry is worth the hype but thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos of traveling here in ireland